going to be on microcytic anemias and the four main ones of interest for us are iron deficient, chronic disease, sideroblastic, and thalassemia. And I'm going to break down as to um, what qualifies each one separately. Um, so as we're looking at it, um, iron deficiency is one of the most common ones. And this is normally seen through diet in children. And then if the stem says like age, then you're going to want to think potentially um, not really diet anymore, but something more along the lines of gastric bleeding. And uh, if it's third world countries, it's potential to be like a worm, uh, Nicator americanus, or something Duodenalis, I don't really remember. Um, these but these uh, arrows I have right here are referring to the um, serum ferritin, uh, TABC, uh, serum iron, and percent saturation. So you're going to have a decrease in your ferritin because ferritin is referring to the store which is in the macrophage. Uh, and I can I guess make another video about how you make heme for hemoglobin to then put into red blood cells, but there's a decreased storage because you don't have any more iron made. TIBC is, uh, so in the blood, iron doesn't freely move around. Um, it actually travels uh, next to this thing called transferrin, and the transferrin is like the transportation of iron. The TIBC is up because you're going to have more transferrin molecules um, available to pick up iron, may, meaning that the TIBC is more willing, the total iron binding capacity is greater because there's more uh, empty transferrin molecules that are willing to pick up iron, but there's no iron available because you're not having it in your diet or you're losing blood constantly. The next one is serum iron, which is very similar to TABC, and uh, the last one is percent saturation, um, very similar. Uh, some other things about iron deficiency that would be important to know, iron is absorbed in the duodenum. Uh, like a simple mnemonic, not really a mnemonic to that, but if you have like iron deficiency, and like kind of another video I'll get to it later, but you have iron deficiency and that's in duodenum, and then you have E9, which is jejunum, and then you have E12, which is terminal ileum. Uh, that's just like kind of something good to know. Uh, but um, so that's iron deficiency. Um, the way it's going to present on the slide is going to be um, hypochromic, which means there's a decreased number of hemoglobin within the red blood cell. So the cells are going to be hypochromic and microcytic. Microcytic, we're really just talking about one of the values that you're going to get on your CBC, which is going to be written not in that pen, but it's going to be written in this pen. And it's going to be MCV, mean corpuscular volume. This is how big the cell looks. These cells are going to be small because they're not actually able to push out full red cells. Um, so the MCV is going to be decreased. Uh, MCV, people who just started the theme, I guess, uh, MCV, normally we're looking around uh, 80 to 100. Anything below it is going to be microcytic. Anything above it is going to be macro, and macro is usually through B9, B12. But we're talking about microcytics, so MCV is going to be below 80, and we went through iron deficiency. So that's pretty much it for iron deficient. You're going to have a paler presentation, so you're going to have, like, um, on the square, it's going to be uh, pale, so it's not necessarily like the white color that you want. I think capillary reflux, I think, might be decreased as well. Not sure. Anemia of chronic disease. Okay, so once again, we have um, our increased ferritin, but then dropping everything else, uh, dropping TABC, dropping, ser uh, dropping serum iron, and then dropping serum saturation. Uh, the reason why you have increased ferritin though, okay, so when you are in a disease state, and this will be important if you want to link it to white blood cells, so maybe if you have Hodgkin's lymphoma or something like this, or like rheumatoid arthritis, or you've been in the hospital for a long time, or like battling infection for X number of months, you might have ACD, chronic disease. And what happens there is the body's like, oh my gosh, uh, there's a disease going on. Um, let's not have the bacteria use up the iron to other do other processes. And there's like cytochromes, like cytochrome P450 oxidase and other ones that require iron in their 
enzyme structure in order to function. So we want to kind of limit the amount of iron that bacteria gets. And in disease states, we want to make sure also that we're focusing our energy to make the body healthy again before making red blood cells every, they turn over 56 days, but every like 120 days you have new cycles of red blood cells. Wow, I'm talking fast. Um, so the ACD, so when you think of this, you're thinking like hospital, you're thinking like non-Hodgkins, you're thinking Hodgkins, who cares? Um, but, uh, so let's say things about uh, ACD, it can present normally as normal acidic, so actually not changing, but then they can go down to microcytic. But why do you have an increased ferritin? So what happens is the body tells, uh, or the liver tells the body, hey, we're gonna stop making proteins that are allowing us to trans trans transport, uh, transport iron. So they, they, they stop production of transferritin and they lock all of the uh, iron inside the cells. Um, so what you can give to people who have ACD in order to increase, um, you can give them a thing called erythropoietin, EPO. So potentially you can give someone EPO. EPO is made in the kidney. Some people who have chronic kidney disease due to ACD won't really, uh, aren't making tons of EPO. So uh, you need to make sure you're giving them exogenous EPO in order to make it because the iron is there. They're just not able to make the red blood cells. Not very many questions on the ACD. If you see disease state, just think, okay, maybe ACD. See so like maybe CBC value of like 76 and they have rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe call for ACD. Sideroblastic. This, you're not going to get this a whole lot, I don't think. But sideroblastic is uh, primarily associated with lead. There is a hereditary component that's not talked about much, but Pat Bell, I think, does a good job. So you have uh, sideroblastic anemia. So the big common thing for this is ringed sideroblasts, and it is blue. And it's going to be a ring of iron inside the mitochondria of red blood cells. And you're like, wait, Chris, there's no mitochondria in red blood cells. You are correct. But when the um, retroprogenitors are trying to divide and push out a lot of red blood cells in order to compensate for the microcytic anemia. Anemia is lack of red blood cells in the system, by the way. Um, to compensate, they're going to push out quicker. When they push out quicker, um, they're going to be going through some other processes and not uh, to um, go through the full proper steps of taking out mitochondria and taking out nucleus, so on and so forth. So you're going to get a ring structure, and that ring structure is because of iron deposited in mitochondria. Um, this can present when stems, for example, you are in India drinking well water. This would be arsenic. Arsenic has an effect here. Uh, it can also primarily, the main one that actually I know is lead. So you have a four-year-old kid move into a new house, or move, they recently moved to a new house, and the house still had lead paint and the kid probably ate some of it, and because of it, he has sideroblastic anemia. You have a low MCV value, you're gonna have this structure presented, presented on the slide. You're gonna go boom, sideroblastic anemia. There might be some other questions referring to where the iron is trapped, so the answer would be mitochondria. A treatment for sideroblastic also might be a good talking point. And this is going to be simply B6. And the test can either write B6 or they can write pyridoxine. And that, I doubt, is the correct way to spell it, but it sounds like it. So it's called pyridoxine, and uh, it's just B6. So you give this to treat sideroblastic anemia. Um, the enzyme that is affected here is called ALA synthase. Um, that's the one that's actually affected by lead. And um, ALA dehydratase, I think, is where the x link deficiency occurs. Um, yeah, okay, fine. So you have your mitochondria, and the ALAS is in here, and then you're making your potoporphyrin ring. So you're making the ring for the iron structure to bind onto to create hemoglobin in order for the cell to transport oxygen. So ALAS is the first start. And succinyl CoA and glycine are the two starting products in order to make protoporphyrin. Maybe a test question. Succinyl CoA and uh, glycine. And so ALAS is in the mitochondria. This is the first step. The next step is ALAD. And ALAD, I think, is the one that's inhibited by excellent, but I could be wrong. Hopefully not. I'll put a picture of it right here. And moving forward.
So now we have thalassemias. Thalassemias are probably the most testable out of all of these, uh, with the exception of iron deficiency. So the thalassemias are broken up into uh, two main categories. You have your alpha and beta. Um, and the alpha and the beta are referring to the chains. So you have a um, regular hemoglobin, which is two alpha and two beta. And that's uh, HBA is uh, alpha two, beta two. You have uh, HBA2, which is alpha 2, delta 2. You have HBF, which is alpha 2, gamma 2. Uh, so the A is the most common one. Uh, so you actually have four of these, and these four are on the test today. <laughs> Hopefully I'm right. Uh, chromosome 16 is where A is. And A, there's four, and there's 16, play something like that. 11 is B, uh, is with chromosomes that are on. Um, so you can have alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia, and that means that you have a missing uh, globin allele. So for alpha thalassemias, um, you can lose one alpha allele, and you will still be able to produce all of the HBA that you want. Uh, when you lose two, and remember you have two, so you have two 16s, and each one has two alleles on it. Uh, when you lose two, there are issues where you have an exacerbation, and these can be uh, have anemic qualities to it, and then you can have uh, cis or trans. And cis means that the two alleles are either from the same chromosome, that's cis, Remember, like, OCHEM, like, you have, like, the bonding, and you had, like, an R group in here and an R group here. That's a double bond. That's a cis configuration. Sorry to bring that back one up. But, uh, so that's a cis configuration. Or you can have it where it hits out the other ones, and that's trans. Cis is more deadly. Cis is more in China. Uh, in Mandarin, the word for yes is s. So maybe that's how you can remember it. I don't know. But cis is going to be uh, on the same side, and that's really dangerous because then you're able to transmit it. Like, so if you have one, then you'll definitely transmit at least, you'll only transmit one. And then that'll be asymptomatic alpha thalassemia. But if you have cis, then you're transmitting asymptomatic thalassemia half the time. So it's like two asymptomatics or one symptomatic. So it makes cis a little bit worse than trans. So if you have three deletions, you have something called HBH. And this is an issue because you have a lot, of, a lot of A's missing. So your beta chain is fine, but then you're going to start making beta tetramers. And when we get into other videos, I'm going to explain this more. The video's going to be long, so I'm sorry about it. But four beta tetramers. Um, and these tetramers are going to combine together, and they're going to form something called a Heinz body. And we're going to look at Heinz bodies when we're looking at G6PD deficiency. But as of right now, the Heinz body in HBH is composed of beta uh, the last one, if you have all four alphas, that means you can't make any of these. You can't make A, A2, or F. And if that's the case, then you have high drops fatalis. And that means in utero, the baby is going to die. Is that or not going to go full term? Uh, this is also called uh, HB Bartz. And you're going to, well, you're going to have a gamma 4 tetramer uh, present there. Um, but you're not gonna see these at term, so no baby's gonna walk in with like missing four alphas. Um, but three is definitely possible. For beta thalassemia, you have major and minor. Minor is asymptomatic, uh, major is not. Um, you only have two alleles of major, so that's where the issue comes in. Um, you can have a decreased, per, uh, decreased functionality of it, um, or you can have it missing, but usually it's a decreased functionality. So if there's two decreased functionalities on each of the alleles, then you're going to have beta thal major. When you have beta thal major, you're going to get something with a crew cut appearance on x-ray. And this is important because it is a, um, it is showing that the body really needs to make red blood cells, but it is in, incapable of making them in the current areas that it's, that it's currently being produced. So in the bone marrow, it's not able to be making enough so it has to now expand. So you have extra medullary hematopoiesis. And this is going to expand to different areas. So you can have the liver or the spleen 
or um, other bones that have bone marrow that are going to start making them. Usually it's in the medullary region of uh, your, the proximal portions of your femur. That's where the most of the bone marrow, or where most of the red blood cells are made. But you can expand that out when the body's put under stress in order to make more red blood cells. Um, I hope that helps, and I'll be making uh, some more about some other stuff soon.